MacGyver. 39 years ago, MacGyver had to quickly build a telescope out of nothing more than a magnifying glass and a wristwatch. It's one of my favorite MacGyverisms from the entire series, but I always wondered if it would really work. Well, in this video, we're going to finally put it to the test. Now, there is a big plot twist near the end. You have to watch the whole video for it to make sense, but don't worry, it's worth it. What were you doing on the night of September 22nd, 1986? Well, I was doing my algebra homework, but I took a break to watch that night's episode of MacGyver called The Human Factor. You see, he'd been hired to break into a top secret military research laboratory, and his first task was to find a way to get through the front entrance door. You know, my original plan was to include several screenshots from the TV show MacGyver, but CBS Paramount told me that uh, in order for me to do that, I would have to pay $1,000 per screenshot. <laughs> so unless Henry Winkler himself sees this video and barges into the CBS headquarters demanding that they let me show the screenshots, well, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with my beautifully handcrafted homemade screenshots. Yes, those are my hands that you'll see with my messed up mutant fingernails. I promise you that no CBS footage at all was used in this video. Now, let's get back to the experiment. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by myself to get through that first door. MacGyver needs to see which buttons the security guards are pushing on the keypad as depicted in this screenshot right here, which, which I created. Uh, that's actually my television remote control that you're looking at. Now, at this moment in this episode, the star of the show says that he only has about half a minute to invent the telescope. Do, 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 do. Now, you may have heard that Galileo invented the telescope, but that's not actually true. It was invented by a glasses maker in 1608 called Hans Lippershe, this guy. What Galileo did do was create the first powerful telescope strong enough to observe the moon and Jupiter. He did that in late 1609, and just a few months later, he published all of his drawings and notes in a book that was called Sidereus Nuncius. Now, that book went on to make him rich and famous. And if you happen to have an original copy of Sidereus Nuncius sitting in your attic somewhere, it's worth about half a million dollars. To put that into perspective, that's enough to license 500 screenshots from CBS. Now, I bring up Galileo because that's almost the exact same type of telescope that MacGyver is creating in this episode. At the front of MacGyver's telescope and also Galileo's telescope is a magnifying glass. In the show, he has a map light system that he unscrews the magnifying glass from, but I happen to have a soldering station, and we'll just unscrew this. Yep. There we go. And that would fit in there like that. And of course, in the show, he takes it out and he sets it aside. But what about the back of the telescope? Well, Galileo used a special lens that was flat on one side and concave on the other. His looked a little bit like that. Uh, this is what did all the magnification in Galileo's telescope. Unfortunately, MacGyver only had about half a minute, so what could he use? Well, it was only a matter of time. Do, 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 do. This is the Timex Camper watch. It was a very cheap watch sold by Timex throughout the 1980s. It had a solid plastic body, uh, and you have to manually wind it every day. Something we're not really used to anymore. Uh, these were dirt cheap back then. They were almost disposable. And with MacGyver's per episode costs infamously skyrocketing so high that they eventually moved production to Canada to save costs, it's no wonder that the producers had the MacGyver character wear this watch through much of the first few seasons. Now, he did eventually use other watches, especially if it was important to the plot point, like if they needed a, a timer or something like that. But this is the one that stands out early in season one and season two, uh, possibly because of this. Can you see that? That dome shape? Now, the glass that you see on the front of a watch is called the crystal. Uh, even if it's made out of acrylic, they still call it the, the watch crystal. Uh, this one has a big dome shape, right? Can you see that? Look at that huge dome shape. You don't really see that a lot these days. Well, that's probably what the screenwriters were thinking when they needed a small lens to complete MacGyver's telescope. And frankly, I mean, it sounds pretty plausible. The challenge is removing this watch crystal from the watch while you're sitting in a truck and you're surrounded by guards. But one thing MacGyver is famous for is that he always carries a Swiss Army knife. Which is why this episode is so maddening, because instead of using his Swiss Army knife, they show him using some uh, like weird spring puller tool to like grab this and, and pull it out, as depicted in the screenshot that I made here. Now, if this was the real screenshot, you would see the second thing that makes this scene so maddening, and that's that they 
switched the watches. Now, at the very instant in the show, when they switch to a view of the watch and they show him removing it with this very inappropriate tool, I should say, they switch. They switch it to this watch. This is the Rothko Trooper, just for that brief moment. And the crystal comes falling off. Now, to the unaided eye, these look identical, but if you have OCD about really cheap, broken wristwatches, like I do, you would notice the difference right away in the shape of the crystal. The Timex has a big dome, and the Rothko is flat on top. Now, in the very next scene, they show him rolling these up in a newspaper, and they show the big dome one from the Timex. So, I don't know why they switched it just briefly for that. If you have any idea why they may have switched the watches at that moment, leave a comment down below. And by the way, I owe a huge thanks to Matt Fumish, who is one of the world's leading historians in classic Timex wristwatches, especially the cheap broken ones that I buy. <laughs> do, 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 do. To find out how far apart our lenses should be, I set a meter stick down on the ground and I taped the large magnifying glass at one end. And then I moved an index card back until the image came into focus. It was roughly 20 centimeters. Do, 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 do. Now on the TV show, they show him holding it like this, and he rolls it up, etc., etc. But in reality, that's basically impossible. It's maddeningly impossible because it falls over every time. Uh, so I tried all kinds of things. I tried taping it. Uh, and then when you put this one in, this flip flops like that. It just becomes impossible. So I used a trick. So what I did was I took a little piece of ruler and I taped the lenses to the ruler to keep them perpendicular. You can see there's there and there's that one there. So that makes it really easy to look through them. But then I just took this cone of newspaper and fed this into it like that. So I know it's slightly cheating, but I couldn't figure out any other way. So let's go test this. Do, 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 do. To test out the telescope, we're going to need something interesting to look at, and I think we found it. MacGyver. First, we'll try the Timex watch crystal. Unfortunately, it's blurry, but let me try to focus it like MacGyver does in the TV show. Still blurry. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe I need to adjust the distance that the watch crystal is to the telescope. Let's give that a try. No, that's still blurry. Let me flip the lens over and give that a try. No, that's still blurry too. What if I try the Rothko Trooper lens? Here we go with the Rothko lens. I'm afraid that's blurry too, but all is not lost. Do, 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 do. In 1973, the makers of the Swiss Army Knife, a company called Victorinox, started adding a magnifying glass into one of the features. Here's the one that comes with my Explorer model of the Swiss Army Knife. And by the way, these are often on sale, and I'll put a link down in the description box. And for the approximately 40% of you that are watching on television these days, I'll put a QR code over here if you want to pause the video and take a picture with your cell phone. That'll take you straight to my Amazon affiliate link for these. Now, MacGyver always had two things on him, a paperclip and a Swiss Army knife, even though he didn't use a Swiss Army knife to take out the crystal, but I'll let that go. But imagine if he had spent a few extra dollars to get a Swiss Army knife that had a magnifying glass. Would that have made a difference? Well. Let's go outside and test it. If you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and push that like button and subscribe. It means the world to little channels like this. Here we go. Will it work with a Swiss Army knife magnifying glass? It takes very steady. Look at that. It works. Okay, so the Timex wristwatch crystal thing was kind of a bust, but if MacGyver had just splurged a little bit on a nicer Swiss Army knife that had a magnifying glass, well, then he would not have had to destroy his own wristwatches. But that's okay, my childhood memories are intact, and I will continue to enjoy the MacGyver series. I've even passed on the love of the show to my own kids. I've put a link to the DVD series down in the description box if you'd like to enjoy them at home. And of course, I'd like to send out a big thanks to Henry Winkler for producing the show. It certainly left an impact on my childhood and may have even steered me into the technical career that I eventually went into. 
And a big thanks out to my daughter who helped with some of the cinematography in this video. As with the show itself, every episode ended with a really odd freeze frame of the actors. And we'll do that here now. Do 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 do.